Hello, welcome back my kindergarten friends. Remember me, Mrs. Diaz? Well, I'm back to teach you about sunlight and weather. This time we're starting a new chapter. Lesson 2.1, chapter two, modeling the sun warming earth's surface. Are you ready to begin? Awesome. So all you're gonna need for today's lesson is good hearing, good observation, right? So are we, we're ready and I'm going to go ahead and start our lesson. So in this lesson, we are going to be returning to our playground problem. Remember in chapter one, we talked about the playground problem and it was about two principals that sent a letter for us to try to solve the problem. So I'm really counting on your guys' scientific learning so that we can come up with a solution to the problem. And in the problem that we had, we had two playgrounds in the same area. The first one is called Carver Playground and the second was called Woodland Playground. As whether well scientists were working on in, in an interesting problem. We want to figure out why the students at the two schools feel different temperatures at recess. Remember that? I do. So we have already figured out a couple of things so far. Often when scientists have a big problem to figure out, like our playground problem, they think about one piece of the problem at a time to make it easier. Both playgrounds are warmer in the daytime than at nighttime. Both playgrounds are warmer in the afternoon than in the morning. So we need to figure out why that happens. And here again, we have the two playgrounds. So a question for chapter two is going to be, why do the playgrounds get warm? Why do the playgrounds get warm? So I'm going to show you two pictures and we're going to talk about it and see if we can start thinking about ideas of why the playgrounds get warm. When a place is hot or cold, it is because the surface beneath that place is hot or cold. A surface is what's in the inside, outside part of something. As weather scientists, we think about the Earth's surface. So we're talking about the surface. So here you look, you see a table. This is the surface of the table. And here you see a picture of a playground. And in looking at both of them, I can assume that the table is going to be on the inside of a room, like in a classroom. And if you remember when you're in your classroom, or even now at home, if you're sitting at a table, if you touch the surface, does it feel hot or does it feel cold? I have a table right here. I don't know if you can see it, but I have a table. And when I touch my table, it actually feels cold. If I'm looking at this picture right here, I'm seeing that it's outside. I see that the sky looks nice and bright. So I can predict, because remember that scientists, as scientists, we make predictions. I can predict that the surface, which is the outside, the surface of that playground is going to be, you tell me, hot. Yes, hot. Right. So as you can see, our vocabulary word for today is going to be surface. Surface is the outside of something. So, for example, I have a bug. The outside of the bug is the surface. Oh, look how funny. It's called, what's the weather? Now, thinking about cause and effect will help us investigate our new question. Cause and effect is when one thing, the cause, makes another thing, the effect, happen. So we're going to take a look at a picture that's going to help you think about the cause and effect. In the daytime, light from the sun shines on earth. We think that the sunlight might make earth's surface warmer. We can investigate to test our idea. So here we see the picture of a bright sunny day. And as you know, 
the warmer, the, the brighter it is, the warmer it's going to be. So we're going to go ahead and analyze the warming model. So let's take a look at the picture that I have. Remember, we talked about uh, using a lamp and what it does when it's turned on. So we can use a warming model to investigate if sunlight shining on a surface causes the surface to be warm. Let's talk about the parts of the model. So here we have a lamp. Here we have, you see that the lamp, the light is on. We have, these are like rubber surfaces and we have thermometer. When you uh, get the lesson with Science Kate, she's going to actually use the model and you're going to see how it works. As you guys know, some um, teachers are working from home and we don't have the equipment that we have in our classroom. But you guys are smart and we're going to use our imagination just like if we had it in our classroom. And I'm going to walk you through it. So here we have uh, is telling us that to remember that scientists make, make predictions as they work to figure things out. Scientists use what they already know to predict what they think they will observe. After they observe, they check to see if what they predicted matches what they, are, they observed. So let's go ahead and see what observations we're going to make. Scientists think about how their models are like the real thing. They are trying to learn about. Let's look at our model and think about how it is like or not like the sun and earth. We will use pictures to help our thinking. So here we have pictures. And I'm going to move my, my own picture around so you can see better. All right. So here we have two pictures. And in these two pictures, you see, it looks like nighttime. Here it looks like daytime with the sun. And the lamps is the same thing. If the lamps are off, we know that the surface is going to remain cold. But if the lamps are on, the surface will be, say it, hot. Yes, the surface will be hot. All right, so let's continue. So how is our model like the earth in the nighttime and in the daytime? How is it? And here's another question. How is our model not like the earth in the nighttime and in the daytime? I'll give you a minute to think about it. Very good. I like all those answers. You guys are tremendous scientists. So our model is like the thing we want to learn about in important ways. The rubber is like the Earth's flat surface, so like that. When the lamp is on, it is like the sun shining during the daytime. When the lamp is off, it is like the nighttime when the sun is not shining. How amazing is that? Did you make the same predictions? I'm sure you did. So our model is also different in ways that make it easier for us to work with and observe. It is much smaller than the real sun and earth and we can turn it on and off when we want to. So if we were in the classroom, we can't bring the sun inside. Can we bring the sun inside? Nah. So scientists use things that might do the same thing. So by using the model, it would be just like you having the sun um, reflect on a surface. And that's exactly what we're, we're doing today. So going back to our what scientists do to answer questions, remember, that scientists observe, they record, and we've done a lot of recording. They compare, so that was 
comparing the two things, like we compare the two uh, parts. And then we talk about it, what we did today. Today we talked about it. You gave me some really good answers. So we're still investigating. We haven't come up with the answer yet, but if we continue learning our next lessons, we're gonna figure this out together between scientist Kate and Mrs. Diaz. We're going to fit, figure this out together. So we have made a model of the thing we want to learn about and observe the model to think about how the real thing works. So I wanna thank you again for your time today. And what you can do while you wait to see the next lesson, you can draw the model that you saw today. That would be really fun to do. So once again, what new idea did we learn today? We learned a new word, surface, the outside of something. So till the next time, I'm saying goodbye. I'll see you soon. You take care, all right? Take care. Bye-bye.